I've only been using Linux for a couple of years, and over this time I've learned a lot of really cool stuff and a lot about how the system actually works, but this becomes really, really obvious when I learn about something new that, to the people who already knew about it, seems really basic and really obvious, but is still incredibly useful nonetheless. I recently learned about sudoedit, and apparently there are other people who didn't know about it as well. Okay, let's go through an example. Normally when you want to edit something that requires root privileges, what you're going to do if you use sudo is do something like sudo, the name of the editor, let's go with NeoVim in this case, and then the name of the file. So let's go with my pacman conf, so pacman.conf, and then you're going to put in your password. And then once you're in the file, you're going to find the thing you want to edit, let's say, I want to go and, I don't know, modify this comment right here. We're going to go and save it, and those changes are going to be saved. That's perfectly fine. But maybe sometimes you'll forget that you need root privileges, and instead just go and run the editor, and then the path to the file. So once again, pacman.conf. And if we want to go and change something, let's say, once again, that comment, what we're going to see is it's a read-only file, and if we go and try to save that, it's going to go and complain because we don't have the correct permissions. For a minor change like this, that's not really a big deal. But if you've made a lot of changes to the config, this can be incredibly annoying. Now, there are hacks to get around this. In Vim, for example, there is a very famous hack where you can use the T command and basically get it to output to where the file was located. Effectively, it's going to copy it byte for byte, and it will actually make those changes. But ultimately, this is just a hack, and there are better ways to handle this. The other thing you may have noticed is when I opened up the application with sudo compared to right now, it looked completely different. So in my case for NeoVim, I have a bunch of custom configs to make NeoVim work exactly the way I want it to work and to look exactly the way I want it to look. And while it's not really that big of a deal if we're missing like our nano configs or our Emacs configs or our Vim configs while we modify just one random file, if we can make use of our configs, it will make the experience slightly better. Now, this can be avoided by making a symlink from your regular configs over to your root user, or if the application has access to these, making modifications in a set of global config files but both of these problems that we mentioned, the problem of forgetting sudo sometimes and the problem of the configs, can both be addressed in a much easier way. And that is by just using sudo edit instead. So if we go and quit out of this file, go sudo edit, then we'll use the same file again, so etsypacman.conf. This time it's actually going to ask us for our password. And once you've entered that, as we can see, the application looks exactly the same as it did before, but if I want to go and make some changes, let's say changes to this right here, if we then go and save it, it actually saves those changes. So now we've fixed both the problems. If you don't like using sudo edit, there is a shorter version of this command, which is just sudo dash e. Sudo edit basically is just an alias for this command. If you just go and run sudo edit, it very likely might just work exactly how you've got your system set up right now. It's going to use Vim or Nano or NeoVim, whatever application you want it to use. Because what it's going to do as a fallback is rely on an environment variable known as your editor variable. This is a variable that basically tells applications, hey, this is my default editor. If this is set, use this. A lot of applications don't acknowledge this, but sudo edit does. However, there are some others we can go and set that will overwrite it. So if you've never set an environment variable before, what you're going to do is go into your bash RC if you use bash, your zsh emp if you're using zsh, or if you're using fish, I presume it's fish RC, but check with the fish documentation about where you set these variables. And the format for fish will be a little bit different. So I'm using zsh, and we're going to go into our zsh emp. So if you've never made one before, it's going to be .zsh emp. It's very likely that you already have one though. If you want to set the editor variable, this is going to be export editor in all capitals equal and then inside a quotation marks the name of the editor. But as I said before, there are some other variables we can use as well. So if you have the visual variable set, that is going to override this. So instead of doing editor, 
basically we just go and change this once again in capitals to visual and that is going to be what it uses but there's another one we can set and this is going to be pseudo underscore editor and if this one is set this is going to be the one that it actually goes with so instead of using nvim let's instead go and set this to vi if we then go and save this and we do a source dot zshm or source bash rc or source fish rc that is going to go and update those variables so let's go and run that and do a sudo edit and then etsy slash once again pacman.conf and as we can see now it's using vi now you might be wondering how this actually works because if it's using our configs Clearly, it can't be running the application as the root user, and you'd be exactly right. So, if you look at the file path we have down here, it's not actually editing the file that we told it to edit. In this case, it's going to be slash var slash tmp, which is the temporary directory, and then it gives it the name pacman with a bunch of stuff after it, dot conf. This file right here is actually a copy of the original file that has been given different permissions that allows our regular user to go and modify it without having to go and open it up as the root user. This allows us to actually go and make use of our normal configs. Now, we still had to include our password for this, and the reason why we had to do that is firstly, to be able to copy the file, we need to have root privileges. To go and modify the file's permissions, we also need root privileges because we're not the regular owner of that file, and then to go and take those changes and then copy it back to the original location, we would also need to be the root user. And then once we go and save this file, if we then go and say copy this right here, so let's go and save and quit. If we go and do an ls and then pass in that path, you'll notice that file no longer actually exists. So once we are done with it, it's then going to go and delete that. This is to make sure that you don't just leave a bunch of root config files just sitting in a location that your regular user can go and read. That would be incredibly dangerous and basically should be avoided at all costs. Anything that is fundamental to making your system actually function should be kept inside of the root account. Now, for the few Duaz users out there, there isn't a built-in way to do this inside of Duaz because Duaz is supposed to be a far more minimal application than sudo. However, we can go and make a script to basically emulate the same behavior. I haven't used any of these myself, but this Reddit post right here, which I'll leave linked in the description down below, basically includes a couple of different methods you can use to effectively do the same thing. Now, I'm well aware that anyone who's been using Linux for a long time probably already knows that sudo edit does exist. However, in the Reddit post where I got the inspiration to finally make this video, it turns out there are a lot of people there who didn't know this actually existed. So, in my mind, surely there must be other people who are as slow on the uptake as I am. And now people can stop mentioning sudo edit every time I modify a file. But this video isn't going to be one of those. I expect to see a lot of comments down there being like, Hey Brody, have you heard sudo, 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 sudo edit, sudo edit, sudo edit, sudo edit. I'm well aware that it exists now. Thank you. That was very helpful. But if you like this video and maybe you learned something and want to become one of these amazing people over here and support the channel, is that the correct direction? Yes, it is. Go check out my Patreon, subscribe star, leave a pay, all linked in the description, not comments, down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice or so a week and I upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And then this channel is available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.